welcome back to the channel so today we're about to do this super bomb french set with very pastel colors and thin lines all right so the first thing i'm doing i'm taking my ec basket square tips and i'm gluing them on these tips are from amazon uh recently they changed their packaging and i think they changed the quality of their tips and i don't know how i feel about that i really don't like them but they were they used to be my go-to but when they changed their formula it's like they made the tips super thick for some reason i don't know what what happened but these are the tips i'm using and she's getting long All the tips are on. I cut them down to her length. And now I'm just going in with my sanding band on a low speed. And I'm just blending in the nail tips to her natural nail. <clears throat> and then on the side of the nail, I kind of file it a little bit so I can get it a little bit skinnier before I have to actual file it. Or sometimes you can even do that and then skip pre-shaping all together, especially with square. Square is, I love square. At first I used to think it was so hard to do, but really it was just the tips I was using. Well, no, it wasn't the tips. I just didn't know what I was doing. But um, the drill definitely comes in handy with pre-shaping. You see how I'm just going on the sides and then just applying a little bit of pressure and then just going up the nail other side love that Right, now I can finally go in with my hand file and then just straighten up the tip since I cut it I didn't shape it so I'm just gonna go in and try to get them super crisp um, this file is 80 80 but it's on the softer side which I actually don't mind because sometimes using very very hard files on just the tip is just too much much so I actually really like this files from a galore all right just filing the tip and as you can see I filed it two different ways the first hand I was going side to side like that and then on this one I started going up and down a little bit really you can do both ways I suggest if you're a beginner to go up and down like that because if you go side to side um, you can easily make it worse instead of actually getting it straight unless you just know what you're doing. So if you go this way, make sure you're not making it curved. Make sure you stay in the middle. All right, so I'm putting on dehydrator. Dehydrator, honestly, is nothing but alcohol. If you have swipe, you can use swipe from Young Nails. But honestly, it's just alcohol. A lot of nail techs um, actually skip this step because it's not as important as the um, primer. But I recommend you do it just to, you know, make sure the quality of your work is good. Now I'm going in with protein bun. I love protein bun. 
I'm going in twice. So I prime twice, but only show it once. Um, I really like protein bun because it's super sticky. I just don't like the size. And then I also go in with Mia Secret. I don't know why I prime with two different primers, honestly. Uh, I don't know why I do that, but it just works for me. So the base color I'm going in with is Young Nails Cover Flamingo. And if you don't have this color in your collection, trust me, you need to get it. This color is bomb. And then Young Nails products overall are just so nice and consistent. That's what I love about them. So I place my first bead like super high up and I just work it down the nail tip. I personally like to cover the nail tip in one not necessarily one bead, but I like to cover the whole nail tip, period, first. I don't know why, I just, it's easier for me to do. <clears throat> so, I try to get a large bead, place it right where the nail tip begins, and then just work it down. And let gravity kind of help pull it down too. I feel like that works better for me. Instead of splitting the nail tip up in so many beads. I'd rather do it all in one bead because honestly if you hold your client finger down gravity will help cover the nail tip so I like to do it in just one bead and of course you know um, you just do how many beads work for you I typically try to do three beads but I know sometimes depending on the design I'm doing I can't do three beads but and then sometimes depending on how long the nail is I could do two beads. Well, I should say how short the nail is. But I, I typically like to do the three ball method. Because I just feel like it's so efficient doing it like that. Well, yes. I love Cover Flamingo. This color is so pretty. And then Young Nails, honestly, when it comes to their like nudes and whites, I typically stick with them. Especially for the nudes, they have amazing nudes. Or just pinks in general. If they came out with some like actual colors acrylic, I'd be so happy. I know they have slick pour, but honestly, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. I need like colors like this, like their um, cover powders. But I need it in actual colors if that makes sense so she actually damaged this nail but I decided to service her anyway and I scolded her though I made sure to let her know next time I'm not putting a nail on there because it's best to let your client know like hey this nail is damaged I really don't feel comfortable working on it but she's been coming to me for a minute now and I just told her, look, if you hit this nail again and it gets worse, don't be trying to blame me. Okay? Okay. But if, say, you have, like, a new client and their nails are super, super damaged, I would recommend you not to work on them because some people are just, they will turn around and blame you for it after you did their nails. Like, oh, my nail is hurting you just you did my nails last so i'm blaming you you know stuff like that so i would recommend you just not even work on them but she's been coming to me for a minute and i was just like i'm gonna let you slide today i will do your nails today but if you hit this nail one more time you have to let it grow back out so i can be um damage free so as far as my application i really do the same thing I cover the tip and then the second bead I build with my apex. Um, your apex is super, super important, especially with long nails like this. Oh, I actually did this one in two beads, I think. With long nails like this, you really want to make sure you have an apex because otherwise they will break the nail. They could, they could easily break it the same day if they don't have an apex. And your apex goes where your natural where their natural nail 
and the nail tip meets so wherever you glue down the nail tip that's typically where the apex goes because that's 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 where the disconnect is from their natural nails to the artificial nail so you need structure right there a lot of people think that the apex is supposed to go at the back by the cuticle but that's entirely wrong you want the cuticle area to be flush with their natural nail you want the apex to be in the middle of the nail okay so I zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see me work on this nail and like I said I just use my brush to kind of guide the acrylic and this brush is a size 12 It's from Tulip Nail Supply I really like this brush at first I was using a no at first I was using a 16 and I was going through my liquid like crazy but then I went down to a 14 I actually still like the 14 is when I ordered this brush the 14 wasn't in stock so I just kept this brush and I've been loving it ever since and this is a size 12 actually so I've been rocking with this size 12 for a minute now and I actually really like it I honestly don't know if I'll go back to the 14 but yeah I really like this brush it gets into the cuticle area really well not necessarily the brush but the size of the brush but yeah again this brush is from tulip you can go to their instagram at tulip nail supplies and then click the link in their bio and it'll um transfer you to their website i love tulip cuticle bead with all my beads i kind of like to sit the brush on there for a second to try to absorb some of that extra liquid that way my bead isn't too runny Throughout this whole process, you you will be able to see that my acrylic, I'm able to mold it. I'm able to push it where I need it to go. I'm able to blend it very nicely. And that's because I have control of my product. If you don't know your liquid to powder ratio, you will have a hard time doing it, seriously. So in order to know your ratio, you really have to sit down and practice with the product you're using. A lot of the times as beginners, y'all switch products so much, you really can't develop a strong strategy when you're going in to do nails. So it's hectic every single time you do nails because you're not trying to learn the product you're working with. So I suggest you sit down, just your brush powder and your monomer and practice your ratio. No, don't worry about no designs or anything like that. Once you get your ratio, everything else will fall in place, seriously. And I tell my students this all the time, without knowing your liquid to powder ratio, nails is gonna be super hard for you. And doing nails is already difficult. And then without knowing your liquid to powder ratio, it's really, it's gonna be all over the place. So, all right, I'm e-fouling. And as you can see, I got two different drill bits. The one with the blue ring right here I'm using first. This is the one I use to foul the body of the nail. This is a carbide medium flat top. And I just go left to right or right to left side to side to smooth the nail. And I go down the nail like that to thin the nail out. So, and you can also do this same technique when you're hand fouling if you're trying to Thin the nail out, you can go up and down. And if you're trying to smooth it out, you can go across. And then I just go underneath the nail to make a C curve. So I don't really touch the cuticle too much with this bit. I just do the body of the nail, try to get that super smooth, and then I come back in with my actual cuticle bit. And this part may be my favorite part. Well, sealing the cuticles may be my favorite part because I just love to clean everything up. That's my favorite, favorite part. Fouling to clean everything up. So with good application, you really don't have too much to foul. I'm just a perfectionist and I just like to foul until it's completely smooth. Everything is proportionate and nice. So this is the cuticle bit I was talking about, and it is smaller than the one I was using before. They're both still barrel bits, but this one is actually smaller, and I think it's a fine instead of a medium. 
Um, I really like this bit because I have more room to see what I'm doing. The other bit was just a little bit too big for around the cuticles. You still can use it. Like, it's not impossible to use. It's just I'm more comfortable when I can see better, especially around the skin. So you see with this bit, like, I'm just taking my time going around. I know it's sped up, but I'm going a little bit slower than the video in real life, obviously. And it just gets right in the cuticle area. I love it. Now, if you don't do this part, your nails will still lift. No matter what products you're using, no matter how good you prep, if you don't seal the cuticle area, your products will still lift. And for a long time, I was having that problem because I was too scared to go by the skin. So my nails were lifting in the beginning until I finally was like, okay, let me just relax. Go really slow. I, I used to go like super slow and then just slowly go around the cuticles and then that problem faded away. So make sure you guys seal the cuticles always. And now I'm using the same file from earlier and I'm just cleaning up everything, reshaping everything, going underneath the nail. Make sure you guys go underneath the nail because if you don't clean underneath the nails and then your clients, you know, they go home and they start rotating their hand around, you know, being nosy. They see a lot of stuff underneath, so make sure you clean underneath their nails. Okay, um, when I reshape, I honestly just keep try to keep my file straight, and less is more, honestly. When you're reshaping, less is more, because a lot of people just get so focused on, oh, I got to get this sharp shape that they over file. Just make sure you look at the problem area and foul what needs to be fouled. Sometimes you don't need to have to go ham on the whole nail. Just look at it, see what you need to fix, you know, and go to that area, foul that area, instead of fouling just to be fouling. So that's why I tell my students all the time, look at your nail. Look at the area you need to fix instead of just picking up a foul and just going in. <laughs> You never want to just go in because then once you um, take too much off, you can't add any back. So just take it slowly, a little bit at a time, and it'll all fall into place. Trust me. You just have to practice more, literally. Okay, we're getting into the design. So this paint palette is also from Tulip. It was super cheap, too. I think it was like a dollar. And it's a, a polish type of palette you just put your polish on there so you won't have to use anything else because I know I used to use my thumb I used to put it on my thumbnail and then just do it like that but that's uh, -uh. <laughs> so I went and got this now the polishes are all from Valentino I'm not sure the numbers the color numbers or names I don't know because I got these from my co-worker so but you can use any polish you have I do recommend using gel polish simply because with regular polish, you'll have to move 10 times quicker. And with the design we're doing, you want to take your time, but the lines are super thin. So if regular polish dries up on you, you kind of have to always like just keep going back in. Whereas gel polish, you just continue where you left off because it doesn't dry until you put it in the light. So the colors were a little bright, so I'm toning them down with this Jelixer white gel polish that I got from my nail supply store. This is the best white gel polish I've ever used. Granted, I only used a couple whites, <laughs> but this one right here is amazing. It's so pigmented. It's very white, literally. If I only wanted to use one coat of that, I would be good because it's just so white. So the first thing we're going to do is start off with the actual smile line. That's what I did first. And to get them all even, honestly, it's just practice. Uh, you can try to measure it. How I do mine is I just put it right where the apex is, in, is ending, uh, ending. Or I just try to aim for the same area. So I go right there to the sidewall, but every time I just come down a little bit and then just swoop it. 
And then you're going to do it so many times that they're all going to look even. But I promise you don't have to stress it. Just as long as it's not a dramatic change. Like as long as one not too far down and the other one is too far up. You're going to be okay. So the striper brush I'm using is from Amazon. Amazon has a lot of tools you can buy. for super cheap. And most of the time they come in packs, so. So with this one, I actually kind of messed up a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with a detail brush to clean it up some. So like I said, gel polish, it doesn't dry until you put it in the lamp. So I have time to fix whatever I need to fix. So here's the brush, I also got this from Amazon. If you search liner brush for the first one, it'll pop up. And for this one, if you search 3D brush, it'll pop up. It's like a, just a little small brush. And we're just doing these pastel colors. And then some, some of them had line work on the inside of them. So I'm just doing that as well. And then I'll just let y'all watch.
All right, so I'm getting ready to finish up the sets, and the finished product will be at the end. Make sure you guys like, comment, and share to your other nail tech friends, you know, if they want to, or send this to your nail tech if you want this design, you know. And make sure you guys subscribe and comment any other videos that you would like to see from me. So pretty.